Change is coming to almost every household in the United States. The Postal Service is stopping Saturday delivery of your cards and letters, which started way back in 1863, has been uninterrupted for more than half a century. Uh, seeing as national political correspondent Jim Acosta is here, he's got details for us. Uh, Jim, this is a major decision by the Postal Service. What, Saturday delivery started in right. 1863? This is a big change, Wolf. Uh, the unofficial motto of the U.S. Postal Service is neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of the night stays these couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. But you can now add to that, except for letters, on Saturday. You've got mail, but soon, probably not on Saturdays. Starting in August, the U.S. Postal Service is halting delivery of letters and first-class mail on Saturdays, but package delivery will continue. It's all part of a plan to save the cash-strapped Postal Service $2 billion after it posted a $16 billion loss last year. Customers saw this one coming. Five days a week is fine for me. I don't do, you know, a ton of business on the weekends. With more people using private companies like UPS and Federal Express and shoppers opting to browse online, the Postmaster General says the carriers just can't compete right, with convenience. Since 2008, we've seen a steady decline in the use of first-class mail. People pay their bills online. It's simple, it's easy, it's free. You cannot be free. And while members of Congress love naming post offices, First Lieutenant Oliver Goodall Post Office Building. The Brigadier General Nathaniel Woodhull Post Office Building. They are in no mood for yet another bailout. I think it had to be um, necessary, unfortunately, that the Postal Service can't to sustain Saturday delivery. Even as Congress is trying to cut the fat at the U.S. Postal Service, lawmakers have easy access to their local post office. There are five, yes, five different branches just for the House of Representatives. Jim, that's a great point. The fact is that the post office has asked, and we have told them, to go ahead and close some of the House and Senate post offices. Historians note post offices are forever stamped into the Constitution. But the Postal Service still suffers from a bloated bureaucracy and legacy costs like paying for the health care benefits of future retirees. House Oversight Committee Chairman Daryl Issa says changes are long overdue. Is this the beginning of the end of the Postal Service, do you think? This is not the beginning of the end of the Postal Service. This is, in fact, the beginning of the reforms that will allow the Post Office to deliver a world-class product to every point in America for an affordable price. Mail delivery is part of American culture, from the Pony Express to Cliff Clavin. By my calculations, uh, my next president has to be named Yelnick McWawa. <laughs> but unless the Postal Service can keep up with the 21st century, layoffs could be delivered next. Uh, if they eventually let people off, it's going to hurt my constituents. Now, it's up to Congress to decide whether it wants to challenge the Postal Service's decision, but with both Democrats and Republicans aware that they might have to pay for Saturday service, they may be unlikely to say, return to sender.